In the early years of the 20th century, Shuichi Ujifusa came from Japan to the bustling city of San Francisco. Ujifusa was part of a growing community of new Japanese immigrants, mostly young men like him seeking their fortunes. The city and the future seemed full of promise. Then one day, a group of men attacked Ujifusa on the street. He fought back, defending himself, and successfully escaping. But the community elders warned him that he had tangled with the wrong characters. He needed to leave San Francisco for his own safety. Fortunately, they found him a job in Northern Wyoming. Heart Mountain will always dominate any conversation about Japanese American life in Wyoming. That's no surprise. In 1940, only 645 Wyomingites identified themselves as being of Japanese ancestry. The arrival of the camp's incarcerated population pushed that number well over 11,000 people. Still, the stories of Wyoming's Japanese American pioneers who settled in the state before World War II, should not be overshadowed. I'm Dakota Russell, Executive Director of the Heart Mountain Wyoming Foundation. Join me as we explore some of those stories. When President Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066, only 15,000 or so Japanese Americans lived outside of the exclusion zone it created. The government concluded that this population did not constitute a threat. While West Coast Japanese Americans were brought to Heart Mountain under armed guard, Japanese Wyomingites were allowed to remain on their farms and in their homes. Though they were never incarcerated, nearly every Japanese American living in Northwestern Wyoming was affected by the camp's existence. Shuichi Sam Ujifusa came to the Bighorn Basin as a line foreman for the railroad in 1906. Eventually, he purchased land and started a farm of his own outside of Warland, Wyoming. Later in life, he joked with his grandchildren about his decision to put down roots there. You have to be careful in life, he told them, because you come from a dumb family. I voluntarily chose to settle in a part of the world to which 11,000 people were involuntarily removed. Think about it. Jokes aside, Ujifusa loved Wyoming and was a tireless promoter for the state. By 1940, he had convinced two of his brothers to join him in Washakie County. Shuichi Ujifusa saw the camp at Heart Mountain for the grave injustice that it was, but also as an opportunity to encourage Japanese American settlement in Wyoming. Ujifusa was not only one of Heart Mountain's earliest visitors, but one of its most frequent. At least once a week, he would wake at dawn, milk his cows, and set off in his car toward Heart Mountain. The drive was nearly 70 miles, but Ujifusa would arrive like clockwork at 8 a.m. The guards became so accustomed to his visits that they didn't even stop him at the gates. When he left at 3.30, in time to get home for the evening milking. The guards would barely look up as they waved him out. Once the administration allowed it, Ujifusa and his brothers regularly hired farm laborers, cooks, and housekeepers from Heart Mountain for temporary help. Incarcerees lived like family at the Ujifusa farm. Legends were told around Heart Mountain about the bountiful and delicious meals served there. While Ujifusa was building his farm in Warland, Manoel Oda was growing up in the small but close-knit Japanese-American community in Cheyenne. Oda's father, Chikahisa, immigrated to the United States in 1907 and soon found reliable work with the Union Pacific Railroad in Wyoming. As a teenager, Oda fell in love with the game of baseball. He played for a local team with mostly white players in Cheyenne and for the Wyoming Nisei, a Japanese-American club that challenged other such teams throughout the West. After graduating high school, he applied to the School of Veterinary Medicine at Texas A&M and was accepted. He was the program's only Asian-American student. After graduation, Oda returned home to look for work prospects. 
His sister Hisa had recently married an Issei farmer near Palo. She thought there might be need for a vet in her neighborhood. Oda moved in with the couple and found work assisting Dr. W. H. Lee. In August 1942, Oda watched the first trainload of incarcerees arrive at Heart Mountain. I felt strange and awkward, he remembered, because I did not suffer the same indignity they were going through. By the next spring, the Heart Mountain Agriculture Department had started a fledgling livestock program at the camp. Oda successfully lobbied to become the project's veterinarian. A friend winkingly described Oda's duties at Heart Mountain as looking after the physical welfare of the project hogs and the social welfare of the unattached Nisei females. One young woman at the camp did catch Oda's eye. After he met Masako Masuda at a Heart Mountain party, Oda started making stops by the camp's reports office, where she worked, as a regular part of his visits. Oda and Masako were married in 1944, and she was granted an indefinite leave clearance to live with her husband in Powell. Shortly after his marriage, Oda determined to set up a practice of his own in the nearby town of Lovell. The predominantly Mormon community was more friendly to Japanese Americans than some other local towns. Nonetheless, there was still some unease about the new vet, but it quickly dissipated as Oda charmed the locals with his impressive knowledge and familiar Western manners. Besides the Odas, only six other families of Japanese ancestry lived in the immediate vicinity of the camp. Two of those families, the Andos and the Kuanos, interacted the most with the camp's residents. Both families had lived outside of Powell for more than a decade and had established successful farms there. Muragi Ando immigrated to the United States in 1907 and moved to Park County, Wyoming in the early 1930s with his wife Miono and their six children. The government built Heart Mountain virtually in Ando's backyard. The 65-year-old Issei and his adult sons became regular visitors at the camp. Corporal Tachio John Ando of the U.S. Army Coast Artillery Corps was especially beloved by the Heart Mountain community. Corporal Ando had joined the Army in October 1941, before the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Though many Japanese American soldiers were discharged after the attack, Corporal Ando was allowed to remain at his post in the Caribbean. Whenever he came home on leave, the Heart Mountain incarcerees hailed him as a returning hero. Another of Meragi Ando's sons, Chuck, began to take over farming operations for his aging parents during the war years. He would occasionally hire temporary workers from the camp to assist him. When his mother took ill, Chuck hired a young woman, Marguerite Takaki, to cook and clean the house. She was a pretty good housekeeper, Chuck later noted dryly. Finally, I married her. White locals in the Bighorn Basin did not look on the Ando family or any other local Japanese American families with the same suspicion as they viewed the Japanese Americans incarcerated at Heart Mount. Park County Sheriff Frank Blackburn was supposed to track their movements, but argued that keeping tabs on innocent farmers was a waste of his limited resources. This difference in treatment sometimes led to bad feelings between the Heart Mountain incarcerees and local Japanese Americans. By the war's end, most Japanese American families in Park County were fully integrated into their local communities. Muragi Ando's descendants still farm around Heart Mountain today. Manol Oda became a beloved coach and player for Lovell's semi-pro baseball team. Chuichi Ujifusa discovered oil on his farm in 1951, ensuring that many generations of his descendants could be raised in Warland. His farm is still in the family today. Ujifusa's dream of a huge wave of former Heart Mountain incarcerees settling in the Bighorn Basin never came to pass. Discriminatory laws passed in the Wyoming legislature signaled to the camp's residents that they were not welcome in the state. Even so, a handful of families followed Ujifusa down to Warland after their release. 
For Japanese Americans living outside the camp, life in Wyoming during World War II was remarkably different than it was for those incarcerated. Many whites in the state supported longtime Japanese American residents, often at the same time as they spread lies and hatred about the Heart Mountain incarcerates. But even longtime pioneers of Japanese ancestry faced racism and prejudice. Railroads and mines fired entire crews of workers simply because of their race. The accounts of Japanese Wyomingites are littered with stories of being accosted at work, school, or on the street during the war. Wyoming's Japanese Americans understood that their relative privilege was only a quirk of geography and that any change in the course of the war could easily result in their own incarceration, or worse. It was important then to help the people of Heart Mountain in the small ways they could, and to foster relationships between the incarcerees and the state's larger population. These pioneers should be remembered, not only for their contributions to building Wyoming, but for supporting their fellow Japanese Americans in a time when much of the country was against them.